thank you, Lord, for taking our sins. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He is alive and well. Can you say amen? Glory to God. We're going to slow it down. Amen. Going into the attitude of worship. Let's stand to our feet. Let's lift our hands singing this song. Oh, it covers me. Starting with the amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound.
chords a thousand thousand and it's better a better is one day in your courts better is one day in your house better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere than thousands elsewhere Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go before God this morning. So glad to be in the house of God in his presence. Let's contend, amen, for God to move upon for salvation for JC, for our family members, co-workers, amen. Those that heard the gospel yesterday that did not make a decision for Christ that they would that the seeds that were planted, amen, would flourish and they'd come to know, amen, come seeking Jesus Christ through it all, amen, for healing, because we serve, amen, a God that will not fail us, a healing, a supernatural God, amen, let's pray for Sister Liava, let's pray for Elizabeth, for uh, Lynn, let's also pray for Sister Faye, and then let's also pray for the precious little Ellie, amen, goes to surgery uh, is it tomorrow, Wednesday, hallelujah, so let's contend, amen, she's going to have eye surgery, and let's pray for, uh, to, for God just to guide the surgeon's hand, amen, and just God just be with little Ellie, amen, hallelujah, let's also be praying, amen, special request for brother Jeff, amen, God needs, uh, he needs just God to move upon his life, let's also be praying, amen, for one another, that God would help us, that we would be there for one another in our own personal time, amen, praying for each and every person that is in this place, just uh, whatever need may arise or whatever need that you're going through now, amen, that we would just intercede for one another, caring about one another, amen, as the saying goes that you hear me say all the time, love God and love people. Let's also be praying for our mother church, amen, they were so very helpful yesterday, <clears throat> we are so grateful, amen, for the camaraderie for the connection that we have through our fellowship and the blessing that they were, amen, in helping us, hallelujah. And then uh, answered prayers, amen. Uh, yesterday we had our back to school bash, gave out uh, 50 plus backpacks. We had over 100 people in attendance. Uh, that's with, I believe I counted like 25, 21 to 25 cars, amen. We even had somebody come and, or not come, but uh, she did attend, but she messaged us on Facebook just saying, thank you so much for uh, putting that thing on with people being hit hard financially and with COVID and all the different things. She was just saying it was a, a blessing, answered prayer, and uh, her kids love the puppet show. And so uh, just with that, amen, six souls saved. Can we give God praise for that? Hallelujah. So it was an awesome, awesome thing, amen. The first showing, we gave out like 38 or 32, 33 backpacks. And then on the second uh, round, amen, we gave out the rest, hallelujah. It was just an awesome time. Even though it did get a little hot, it wasn't hot as, as last year or as, uh, as it's been the rest of the summer. So it's just been an awesome time. And so I'm looking forward to make things uh, bigger and better next time, whether we do it for next year or we do it latter part of this year just doing another puppet show because it does reach the kids amen that's why sesame street has been on tv for so long <laughs> amen kids love puppets so do adults amen that's why some comedians do the ventriloquist thing and so we need to utilize those things amen for god the gospel for ministry and that's what we're doing and so just from me and my wife amen we would like to express our thanks to those that helped out whether it was passing out flyers whether it was praying whether, you know, just giving some ideas, and then most of all, for those that put in the work, amen, uh, in the play or the puppet skit, amen, uh, those that are on the south side, I know they'll probably listen to this later on or whatever, but we do express our thanks, amen, it was an awesome time, and we know that souls are going to be saved even down the line, and people are going to come in, hallelujah, so let's contend for that, if you have a need that's heavy upon your heart this morning, that hasn't been stated, just show that, by uplifting of your hand and all as always if you're on live stream social media please give us a call text <clears throat> or a message uh with facebook messenger amen if 
you call, please leave a message because, of course, while we're in service, I'm not going to answer. But we love to be a part of what God's doing in your life or what you are seeking. Amen. So let's go before God this morning. Then as prayer subsides, we're going to ask Brother Ken if you'd open us up in prayer. So let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and glory, Lord, for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for the souls yesterday. We ask, my God, Lord, that those that got ministered to, my God, that did not make a decision for you, that they'd come to know you, my God. We're asking, Lord, for killing, my God. Have your hand upon those uh, that are needing protection, Lord. We just love you and we thank you. Yes. Amen. So welcome to the Door Church where Jesus Christ is truly changing lives. Amen. Uh, We do have a few announcements. Hallelujah. Let's not forget our regular service times, of course, this morning at 1030. We always have prayer at 930. This evening, prayer at 5 o'clock, service at 6. So join us. Amen. It is always a different service in the evening, different preaching, different sermon. And so... Uh, don't miss out what God wants to uh, minister to the to the people. Hallelujah. Uh, then this Wednesday, prayer at 6, service at 7. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have an off week uh, because of working so hard for the back-to-school bash, working on the church. Amen. We're getting uh, things uh, coming along. I want to say thanks to those that are helping keeping the church clean, helping with the remodeling. Amen. Uh, you don't know how much it means to me and my wife, hallelujah, just for the help or even just the suggestion on different things that need to be done. And as always, if you want to be a party, man, just always follow the announcements or the calendar for those work nights, amen. It don't always have to be hard labor. It could be other things of once we get our stamp, you can start stamping tracks. You can uh, help my wife paint, amen, our pastoral wall. There's always different things that can be done. But amen, take this Thursday and Friday um, and just enjoy yourself or do things at home. But then on Saturday, we are going to have our men's breakfast, amen. Those of you that are here, amen. We had our first one last month and it was a joy, but amen, the more the merrier, amen. Uh, do please bring uh, money if for to pay for your meal, but don't let that keep you. You can pull me off to the side or tell me beforehand that you don't have the finances, because I don't want that to keep you from coming, because we are going to, of course, we're going to talk amongst ourselves and just have a good old time, but then we're also going to start talking about the things in the church, uh, just how the church is going, things that you might want to see, different things like that. And then also with that announcement, we're also going to start doing the same thing for the ladies. Uh, it might not be a breakfast, we might, it might be a lunch or a dinner, whatever uh, the ladies can figure out, but I want the ladies also to meet Uh, once a month also just to have lady time amen and so it's very um it's needed for the church amen you know we we hang around and we get together and stuff like that but we need a time just where we're not trying to just minister or uh, preach the gospel we can minister to one another amen that fellowship is much needed hallelujah and so men please look forward to it uh 9 a.m we're going to be meeting at old orchard a restaurant uh, just been wanting to go there anyway they had a fire not too long ago but they're still operating but they you know the building is still in a little bit of disarray so we can go help by um, eating there amen financially just blessing them with uh, what they're doing and they've been a blessing to us when we we're right there in that building hallelujah and so old orchard is where we're meeting at amen if you need a ride let me know hallelujah uh, let's see here. That's all the announcements this morning. Amen. Let's go ahead and give God praise as Brother Ken comes and takes up the offering. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We lift you up. We glorify your name. Good morning. Man, offering is easy after what we did yesterday. It really is because uh, there's so many people who gave. There's so many people who contributed in all these different ways. You know, last Wednesday, Brett announced that uh, all the school supplies were completely contributed. They were completely donated. Everything was covered by people. 
Uh, we didn't have to take out of the general account is what he said, and uh, which we would have because we wanted to see souls saved. We wanted to be a blessing to the community. We wanted to be a light to others, and I believe wholeheartedly that we were. Um, you know, I was telling Molly this morning, I want to kind of talk a little bit first before I go into my scripture. I was telling Molly this morning that, uh, and, and, and Liaba, it's so funny that um, when God asks us to do something, we don't always know why. You know, if we've been walking with God for a while, we know that it's for something good, but you don't really know the details. You don't know, you know, so-and-so is going through this specific thing. You don't know those details. You don't know those little things. And there's so many, you know, there's five people who, who came to God yesterday, either coming back or coming for the first time. And that, that's an incredible thing. There's a, there was even like a little one, you know, that, uh, you know, you could just tell that there was just something going on that we didn't know, but God knows. And, you know, she, uh, she, was, she was moving. Even people that didn't raise their hands, I could just feel it. God was all over them. He was just moving. <clears throat> it's because we were obedient. It's because we gave. And I want to turn to Philippians chapter 4. I've done this verse before. And when I did this verse before, I was talking about a future event, and now I'm going to use it talking about a past event. Starting in verse 17. Well, actually, just 17. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. You know, Paul is talking about giving. He's talking about when people gave to him to supply his needs. And he's saying here, doing it so that he could just get the gift to have it. He was doing it because, see here, I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. If you gave, if you sat at home and you prayed, you know, because there were some people that said, well, I couldn't go, but I saw the time and it was 1 o'clock and I knew you guys were starting and I just started praying. They're probably setting up right now. You know, okay, about this time they're probably doing the show. I'm going to pray and cover that show. You know, that's also giving. That's, that's contributing. That's saying, you know what, God is doing a move and I want to be a part of it. And then the scripture here says that, the five people that got saved yesterday, that, uh, that is to your account. That is fruit that is abounding to your account. So that when you go to heaven, God's going to be like, yeah, you see that crowd over there? You had a hand in their salvation. Go talk to them. Maybe you didn't meet them on earth, but you can go talk to them now. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, I remember that show, you know, because we're going to have perfect memories in heaven, I'm sure. It'll be a lot better than what I got now. <laughs> but we'll remember all these things, and we'll be able to look back and say, my goodness, you know, you did this, you gave this, you prayed this, you... You said, you know what, that person over there is hurting, and I want to go help them. I want to show them the love of Jesus. I want to share this light that I have. You know, it's, it's not just about us getting saved and, oh, we made it. Oh, we made it. We're good. Oh, man, I didn't know if I was ever going to get saved. I sure was a stubborn one. Oh, man, you know, I'm struggling. I'm having a hard time. I'm this. I'm that. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm sorry. That's not God's will. He wants us to have a better heart. He wants us to have a better life, but it's the people out there, too. And that's what we did yesterday. And that's that, that fruit that's going to abound to our account. You know, when we help and we service others, it's not that we're seeking anything. It's not that we're having anything, people patting us on the back saying, good job. That, that's not what this church's heart is. This church's heart is we're saved. We know what it's like to have Jesus. We know that life is tough. The world will eat you up and spit you out. It doesn't care about you. But Jesus does care about you. And when we show that to others, we have a hand in their walk. We have a hand in their life. And that's what the scripture is saying is that it, there's a point where it's not about you anymore. It's about the fruit that is out there waiting for you to go and get it. You know, God is the one who is ultimately moving. He is the one who is ultimately telling us to do these things. And we're just abiding and following that. And when we do it, we don't even know who's out there that's hurting. We would have never met those people if we never had a puppet show. We would have never met those people. We would have never known the path that they're on because their path got interrupted, like a recent sermon that Fred did. He's talking about life interrupted. We interrupted life yesterday, and we interrupted it with the backing of Jesus, and Jesus is touching hearts out there. And because of that, there is fruit waiting for us. There is fruit that is waiting for them in their lives. What a glorious, glorious thing. You know, so we always look back and we say, okay, well, we did this. This is good. This is great. What about the next one? What next thing is God going to say, do this? And we already have the finances for it because people gave because they knew the next one was coming sometime. What about when we say, hey, we're going to go do this, and the people are already here saying, I want to contribute. I want to volunteer. Because of this past event, I saw what happened, and I want to be part of the next one. What is the next one? I don't know. God hasn't said yet. we got a revival coming up in October. 
But maybe something's coming up in September. I don't know. I'm not God. We're just obedient. And he is saying he wants to move in the city. He is saying he wants to move in your heart. When you go and you give of yourself, he's going to move in your heart too because you'll be seeing different things here. So as we contribute this morning, if there's something that God is pressing you to do, whether it's an amount or a smile or just giving praise or just just talking about him, you know, whatever it is, just pray that you'll be obedient to it because it will grow you. When you talk, when you think about others, it will always grow you. And so this morning, I'll ask uh, Brother Kyrie if he'll pray for this offering. Amen. God, as Brother Ken said, yeah, it was an awesome time yesterday, but we're definitely going to be having more events, hallelujah, just trying to have different ideas on what to do, amen, and so they, we came up with uh, the idea of having the drive, drive in or drive up <coughs> puppet show, hallelujah, for the back to school bash, and I'm even thinking we'll probably do something drive up, drive in, concert, um, movie, <clears throat> whatever it takes, amen. And so I'm actually looking at a device, it's an FM transmitter, if you're wanting something to specifically pray for or give towards, is an FM transmitter, and so that would have solved a lot of our uh, sound problems yesterday. People in the back row were having a hard time hearing. And so with the FM transmitter, all they have to do is dial in to the certain station that we're broadcasting on, and they can turn it up in their car. And so that's just another, thank God for technology. Amen. And so that's another avenue that we can use. Amen. And then also looking forward, this is another thing as uh, Spanish-speaking folk come in, or who knows, we might have a bunch of Orientals come in, and then we have a translator we can use the FM transmitter to where we can have interpreters in the back or secluded in an interpretation room. And then they bring or we give them an FM transmit or FM radio with earbuds and they can listen to the translation uh, separate from everybody else hearing, you know, hearing the translator or the interpreter. Hallelujah. And so these are just things, amen, that... Uh, Looking down the line, we can use and utilize for ministering the gospel, as Brother Ken was talking about giving this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. If you open your Bibles to Hebrews, uh, 12, 1 through 3, I was actually, was going to preach a sermon Basically talking about servanthood, but then God uh, had me switch it this morning. So whoever this is for, which it's always for everybody, you can always get tidbits out of it, even if it's not mainly for you. Um, God made me switch gears. Hallelujah. So if anybody in here is going through a trial or has been in a trial, had doubts, faced temptation, uh, I kind of think as we're here on earth, this is going to be an ongoing thing. There's going to be times where we're always facing stuff. And as of right now, we know the whole world is facing COVID. And I'm trying to kind of stay away from that because we have our everyday lives that we got to deal with. And sometimes it looks like we're not going to survive what we're facing. Sometimes in our time of need, it looks like we should throw in the towel. But I'm here to encourage you this morning to 
tell you don't quit. Because there are great things, great blessings in store for you, and you can survive. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the Arthur and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I want to preach a sermon called, I Will Survive, and yes, I am also pertaining to the song, (laughs) I Will Survive. (laughs) Hey, hey. (laughs) Looking to Jesus in our text, amen, helps our survival instincts kick in. What does it mean to survive? The definition says outlast, outlive, to continue to exist. See, we're on a precipice. There's so many things that can go from here, but one of the things I do want to just focus real quickly on is as the world is getting into this state of getting worse, one of the things that we're dealing with is an entitlement mentality mentality, and ungratefulness that our generation, that this generation is going through. Just, I actually just read and saw an article just this morning talking about one of the politicians are... um, what is her name? Uh, I think it's Osio Cortez or whatever her name is. The AOC is talking about where us Americans, this generation has not experienced prosperity. And you're like, what? There's a cell phone in almost every hand. There's electricity at every house, unless you didn't pay the bill. We have the privilege, we were talking about the other day, the privilege of air conditioning. I think I was talking to Brother AJ on the way home. I was like, I I just don't, I I mean, I I wonder what it was like when they first introduced AC and they probably thought it was like magic, black magic or some kind of weirdness going on. But some people truly believe this, that we have not experienced prosperity and I know some of you guys, some people in here have went to Africa and done some missionary work and have a better understanding than most of us that, man, we're experiencing prosperity all the time. But see, when you have this mentality, you're ungrateful. You feel like everybody owes you something. And us as Christians, you know what? We need to survive. We need to outlast this mentality so that the next generation or the people that are growing up can have an understanding of who God is. Granted, we have a helper and a mediator, and so we know we we will survive. We can outlast. We can continue to exist because the Bible says there will always be a remnant of people that truly believe in God, that will follow his, try and strive for, to follow his every word. See, when you know who God is, you will survive because God loves you. You have an understanding that God forgave you of things, amen, that even sometimes you say that you're not worthy to be forgiven. We will survive because you know what? God has a plan and destiny for each and every life. We need to have a mentality of we will survive because we fight not only for ourselves, but also for others. As Brother Ken said, you know, we we as Christians, the reason we go out and do the things we do is because we already know God, we love God, and we experience His blessing. But those people out there don't. 
Some of them that have no homes or they're addicted to a drug or they're addicted to some kind of substance are not experiencing the blessing and love of God as we do because they don't see it. And they cannot acknowledge it because their mindset is not where it needs to be. See, survivalists, as we know in the world, and you can, they have YouTube channels and they go on, you know, uh, what's that one channel? National Geographic. See, survivalists have a knowledge or they've kept a knowledge that they can make it in pretty much any condition. They go out in the wilderness. You know, it's almost amazing. You know, they can tell each bush from each bush and knows what's, what uh, berries are poisonous and not poisonous and all this stuff. And then they're over here eating moss and surviving for weeks and years. They're like, man, I can't eat just grass. I need, you know, some meat or something. But thank God for you and I. In life, if you have Jesus, we have everything we need. Can you say amen? So to help us, amen, on surviving, the first and foremost, we need to rely on Jesus. Verse 2 of our text says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the Arthur and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross, endured pain, endured chastisement, endured being come against uh, just everything. Scorning at shame set, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God because of what he was willing to endure, because the joy was set before him. Knowing that a God that loves us, if we lie, rely upon Jesus, we can get this understanding. I preached a sermon here recently just talking about, you know, seize the day. It's a daily battle and we need Christ more and more each and every day. Our text talks about persevering. Persevere, that definition is to persist, persist in any purpose or idea. To strive in spite of difficulties or obstacles. That's persevering. No matter what comes against you. You're not, oh, I lost my job, I quit. Can't take life anymore. But besides the difficulties, you still strive. And see, it's easier when you know Jesus Christ. Because then you have somebody that you can go to and pray to and be like, you know what, God, I need help. And from my own experience just here with these past few months, you know, I, I was, God blessed me with a job that I had been able to work this whole time during COVID. My wife, on the other hand, has a different story. But you know what? We prayed and we came to God and then we, we, have, we have ideas. There's things we can do. Just here recently, you guys heard about me getting a 3D printer. Well, there's things we can do now that opened up doors to where we're making name tags. With, Don't forget, I haven't forgot about you, Liava. We're making name tags for people. You know, you always go to these places when you're traveling and you want to find your name. Well, when you got a name like Liava, that's not going to be up there. When you got a name like Kyrie, it's not going to be up there. When you got a name like my daughter, Asia, even though it is a continent, it's not up there. So there's, there's a market for this stuff. But that's godly wisdom. We prayed about it and God is helping us. See, there's different things you do. You don't have to work for somebody. You can work for yourself. But you persevere in spite of difficulties or obstacles. When you rely on Jesus, he gives you strength. He gives you wisdom. Isaiah 33, 2 says, O Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. You know, people say God helps those who help themselves. Even though that's not biblical. But how, even, even with this mindset... How can God help you if you are too busy trying to do it yourself? You ever had to lift up something heavy? 
And, you know, young teenagers and young books, they're like, oh, yeah, I got it, I got it. But us older people, we're like, and then somebody comes up and says, hey, let me help you. No, no, I got it, I got it. And then, you know, you're, you're out, uh, out of play for a few weeks because you done hurt your back or tweaked a nerve. How can God help you if you're shrugging his hand off? See, we need to rely upon Jesus. We need to rely upon that help that is presented to us. And that's how we survive. That's how people live longer. Because, you know, in their younger days, instead of just trying to be the macho, trying to show off in front of the girls, you ask for help. So that I know I can lift this, but you know what? Go ahead and help me so I can just protect my back for a few more years. That was one of the first things whenever I was in my business that my uncles told me because without me even knowing, I didn't know my uncles were kind of in the same business as me, so it's a family thing, I guess. But they told me, they said, protect your body. Don't be too macho. Don't be too prideful so that you won't be broken down like we are in our age. So we take the help. 2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Even what I'm talking about, you know, it's kind of fleeting, you know, working out and stuff doesn't gain much, but whenever you're renewing yourself in Christ day by day, that is the best thing to do because it's about eternity. Has anybody ever told you that you're losing it? <laughs> We should understand that God is not the one losing it. We are. Actually, we are the ones losing it. Let's not forget that it's God all along that's been keeping us afloat. He's the one that can help us find our marbles. <laughs> He's the one that can help us find our traction. He's the one that can help us. I was thinking yesterday, I think it was the sun. Man, I kept getting a water bottle and putting it down. I mean, you know, everybody has a water bottle. So I put it down. I don't know which one's mine. And so I, can't, I got like 10 bottles yesterday. Didn't finish one. So all those 10 I threw away this morning are probably mine. <laughs> losing memory, losing these things. But when you rely upon God, he keeps the things that matter. He allows you to remember the things that make everything matter. Psalms 124, 1 through 8, If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, If the Lord had not been on our side, when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird out of the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Powerful portion of text, but you should get the visual of it that he's referring to, the writer's referring to the crossing of the Red Sea. That when they were escaping Egypt, man, their anger, the Egyptians' anger was inflared. They were coming after them. You know what? To kill them on their chariots, on their horses. Pharaoh probably saying, bring me Moses' head. And he allowed his people to cross that's one of the amazing, I, think, I don't think sometimes we realize the things that the Bible talks about in some of the stories. He allowed the people of God to cross on dry land. This is a sea. This land has been underwater for years. But the God Almighty allows them to not walk through mud, but on dry land. 
And then after every single person gets across, the waters come rushing in, taking the army with them. That could have been the children of Israel in the middle. And I, I know how we would be. We'd be like, oh my goodness. Actually, I probably would have sprinted all the way through. I ain't waiting. You see, verse 6 says, praise be to the Lord. See, we're relying upon Jesus Christ. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. To survive the onslaught, the bombardment of evil today, we need to rely upon Jesus. Second thing, we need to obey that's a hard thing for us nowadays. I don't know why. It's part, it's kinda, it's part of human nature, but whenever you, you're a Christian, it's, it's, even though it should be easier, sometimes it's just as hard. I'm being real this morning. I'm, I'm in that same boat. Deuteronomy 26, 16, The Lord your God commands you this day to follow these decrees and laws. Carefully observe them with all your heart. And with all your soul, Joshua 1.8, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Now, don't get me wrong. Let's, let's get a balance in here. I'm not saying just because you follow God, you're going to be prosperous and successful and just all the anointing in, in favor of God. We need to obey him. But see, that, that's part of the thing that we can have the full f- favor of God, full blessing of God, when we do these things, when we rely upon God and we obey him in everything. I had, we had somebody talk to us the other day, was saying, well, why, why do I need to just always follow God when I'm still being blessed? I'm like, man, you're missing, you're missing the point. Let me try to put it in most simplest terms. Let's say what you're doing now, somebody gives you $1,000. Man, I think everybody in here would say, man, I could use $1,000. And granted, this, uh, financial is not the only thing, but this is the best way I can explain it. But now, let's follow God to the fullest. Let him be your all in all. That thousand turns into a million. It's even a greater blessing, an even greater reward, even more favor. But why settle? See, this, this person that came and talked to us is settling for the thousand. He's settling just for one friend. Instead of having 20. Or even to the extent of how God operates, instead of one friend, you have a family that truly cares about you that is even closer than blood. See, you're settling. When you settle like that in the things of God, you can't survive. But when you give everything to God... You get so much more. Or another aspect, some people think that they, they sacrifice. Sometimes our thinking is if we have sacrificed so much to God, why are we having such a hard time? My question to you is you may be sacrificing, but are you obeying? If God didn't tell you to sacrifice, how can he bless it? It's not his will. 1 Samuel 15, 22, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. This is a biblical principle. See, the reason we've gotten into this mentality is because people are trying to do it their own way. Well, God wants me to 
sacrifice my time for church, but you know, I'm going to sacrifice my time for something else. I'm still sacrificing, but you're not obeying. To really survive this world, we have to obey. A quote by Henrietta Mears, will is the whole man active. I cannot give up my will. I must exercise it. I must will to obey. When God gives a command or a vision of truth, it is never a question of what he will do, but what we will do. To be successful in God's work is to fall in line with his will and to do it his way. All that is pleasing to him is a success. Obedience is better than sacrifice. This is why after figuring this out, I strive to be obedient to God. Because there's so many ratifications and we really won't know until eternity. But let's take, for instance, yesterday. We know it was by God. But let's say it wasn't. Let's say we just came up with this idea and we're doing, and God will still work for the good of those that love him. But let's say because we did it on our own and we sacrificed and didn't obey God because he wanted us to do something else, there could have been more than six people saved. Now he graciously and mercifully, because of course those people out there needed it, but maybe because of our disobedience, he held back. See, if we want God's blessing, we got to do it God's way. If we want the things of God, we got to do it God's way. You ever been to a vending machine? And a lot of times we get mad because, man, vending machine, man, their prices have went up. But you go to this vending machine and whatever thing that you want, let's say it's a Snickers, there's a price and it says $2. Have you ever tried putting a dollar fifty in? What happens? Nothing. Actually, there's a little flashing light most of the time, a little screen. 50 more cents. 50 more cents. But that... That, that vending machine across the street that has the same Snickers for $1.50. That's not the same vending machine. See, God's requirements and God's laws have been the same throughout eternity. It does not change. But the world is trying to change them to fit culture. Culture should change in the aspect of God, not the opposite. This is why us as Christians, we truly need to survive the times because we need to preach the truth. We need to preach the gospel. We need to let people know that this is the true word of God and this is alive and well to help you survive, to help you live, to help you do what needs to be done in life. Second Thessalonians 1, 4-8. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. All this is evidence that God's judgment is right. And as a result, you would be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with the powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is kind of a hard saying. And you guys, the pastor, you started off so good with encouragement, but now you're talking about punishment. You really can't have one without the other. Word of God says he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey. So flat out, you want to survive? Obey. It's the word of God. It says it plainly. Those that do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, it's hand in hand. The first point was rely upon Jesus. So if you rely upon Jesus, you know what? You're going to obey because you know who he is.
Another word with surviving usually comes in context as endure. The definition of endure is to remain firm under adversity. Nobody going to change your mind. Bear up as under tribulation without yielding. Somebody came to you, put a gun to your head and says, unless you renounce Jesus, I'm going to kill you. He says, might as well take me. But then there's going to be some people who are like, no, no, don't take my life. I don't know you. Who is this Jesus? Who is people you Jesus? Now, Grant, I'm sure God will give you a chance to repent because he doesn't want anybody to perish. But we have the choice to continue to act or function under adverse conditions. Can you still be a Christian when the peer pressure is on? Oh, man, it won't hurt just to smoke this. Man, your parents won't even know. We're over here at the school. (gasps) You're a virgin? Man, nobody's a virgin. I'm going to take you to a party and get you hooked up. To continue to act under adverse conditions when the peer pressure's on. Like, hey, so-and-so likes you. They want to hook up. I heard, she told me her parents ain't home tonight. Or maybe you're already in a relationship. My parents ain't home tonight. (laughs) Are you going to still do what God has called you to do? Another part of the definition, to undergo a hardship or difficulty without faltering, giving in, or breaking. Temptation comes. You're all alone. And we all, whether it's internet, cell phone, family ain't there, there's things you can see for free that are appetizing to your lustful flesh. What you gonna do? Can you endure? And in and of ourselves, we can't. But with Jesus Christ, when you're obedient, you have this understanding, God, I need you because you know what? I I can't handle this. I want to look at that porn side. I want to look at these things. God, I need your help. Can you survive? And you can. So the last thing this morning, the third thing is commit. Commit. When you commit to being a Christian, when you commit to obeying God, when you commit to relying upon Jesus, there's a shift. 1 Peter 4, 9, So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful Creator and what? Continue to do good. Definition of commit. Commit. To give in charge our trust, to put officially in, cust- in custody our confinement. So this is why whenever we ask people to make a decision for Christ, in that prayer, even though it's just a prayer, and it's not so much the prayer that saves you, it's your attitude, it's the longing for Christ, it's the after We tell you, I commit my life to you. I submit. See, when you want to learn something, when you want to survive, when you want to be successful, you submit to certain things, to certain principles. Learning how to play guitar or bass, you submit to the functions of the guitar. It's not the same as piano. Some things are. Of course, you got the keys and then you got strings. You can't put some keys on a guitar and be like, I'm playing guitar. (laughs) It's not going to sound right. It's not going to function properly. You submit and you commit yourself to those things. Or we wouldn't call it a a guitar. Then you just made a a kind of piano thingy. 
Playing the drums is different than playing bass or guitar. There's different principles. Sure like to see it, man. Some would probably get mad if you take some drumsticks to their guitar, to their bass. You get some sound out for sure. But it's not going to sound right. You're not going to be successful in playing if you're trying to play the drums on a guitar. You commit. You give authority. You give charge to those things to function, to be successful. Commitment is a bad word in today's society. They don't want to say commit. They'll say F you. They'll say all the other words. But don't tell me to commit. Sign on the dotted line. I ain't doing that. Shoot, it's like pulling teeth just to get a, a contract for a, a lease at an apartment. God doesn't ask you to sign a line. He just wants you to live. He wants you to take action. Your life will show it. That's the signature. Somebody can look upon your life. That's a Christian. Has anyone seen, is it even still on TV, the show Survivor? It's probably all reruns. Part of that TV show is the last man gets the reward or the main prize. And in Christianity, the reward is a side benefit. It's extra. This should not be the main focus. See, when you commit yourself, see, most people in the show, they committing to do this show with the idea in mind, I'm getting a reward. That's not how Christianity should be. You commit because you know who God is. The reward is just a side benefit. You commit because God loves you, because you were a wretched sinner. You commit because God still bestowed grace and forgiveness, even in the depths of your sin, whether you're in fornication or you're shooting uh, some substance up your arm, looking at things you shouldn't be looking at, he still says, you know what, I died for you. This is why we should commit. Not for the reward, but to encourage you, I'm going to bring the reward. I'm going to talk about the reward. St. Chronicles 15.7 says, But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Now, Grant, I know pretty much everybody that was here yesterday would say, you know what, the reward enough was seeing those souls give their life to Jesus Christ. It was amazing. I loved it. Brother Ken was up there taking up altar call, and he's giving out the, the invitation. He's like, if you want to get saved, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, lift your hand. Well, if you don't want to lift your hand, honk. And then we have one person, oh, man, you should have seen the south side and us. We're just like, because the person honked. We're like, hey, that car, it's a lady. We need a lady over there. She was willing to honk her horn and announce to everybody, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. That was reward enough. But you know what God says? I'm going to give you even more because you're a soul winner. Your work will be rewarded even more so. Revelation 3, 10 through 11, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. First, the crown baffled me. Because you know most people in this day, when you think of a crown, you're probably thinking like king. Or last night, my mom wants me to make, because she lost hers for her Halloween costume, the, the crown for Wonder Woman. But in the Gospels, crowns are like Boy Scout badges. You know, in Boy Scouts, you know you got this badge for, I don't know, helping people, for volunteering, for building a fire, putting up a tent, all these things. Or you can also attribute them to also the stripes or the symbols in the military. 
Now this morning, since I had to sh- shift gears, I didn't have time. I wanted to get pictures and stuff like that. But some of you guys that have been in the military might know uh, what some of these symbols are. You know, you start out, you get a symbol, you're a private. Everybody can look on that symbol and be like, yeah, he's, he's a private. He's green behind the ears. But then as you mature, as you learn some things, as you get some things under your belt, then you rise up in rank. And you can start being, you know, uh, what's the next thing after private? PFC. PFC? Oh, first class. First class. Oh, I'm first class now, baby. Moving up in the world. They look at that symbol. They're like, okay, he, he knows a little something. What's the next one? Corporal. Corporal. Man. I got a little authority under my belt now. What's the next one? Sergeant. Sergeant. Man, that even sounds tough. What's the next one? First sergeant. First sergeant. And then next? I never made it. <laughs> never made it. <laughs> right? But you guys are getting my point. Even if after sergeant, if you get into general, and I think there's like two, three... Two different tracks, two different militaries? Okay. Officers? Okay. <laughs> but they got different class. Just like I said, Scout, Boy Scouts, you got the different rankings. You got, you know, like I was saying, you got four-star general. You got two-star. Three. Apparently, if there's a four-star, there's one, two, three, and four. Man, they even have titles on those? Dang. But see, look at the text that we just read in Revelation 3, verse 11. It says, hold on to what you have so that no one would take your crown. Can you be demoted in the military? She said it. You probably can't hear it over live stream. She said yes. You can be demoted because you know what? They probably disobeyed. They didn't follow and rely upon the commands of their functioning officers. The same thing goes in Christianity. You want to survive, you must rely, you must obey, you must commit. Hold on to what you have. But see, this is why we're just not getting all the rigmarole. We're not doing the rigid stuff. I'm going to tell you about the grace of God, His love. Now, granted, most of the military is not going to have the type of love that Jesus has. But he does have an essence of mirror. God's army. We, We even sing a song, God's got an army marching through the land. That's you and I. But we must hold on. The reason we're marching is because we know the end. We know God is coming soon. We know that Jesus Christ is coming back. And we got to march and declare the word of God so that others will survive the coming. This test that is talked about in Revelation. We want to keep as many people from having to go through that. And so does God. This is why we have our marching orders. This is why he has told us to go out into the highways and byways and preach the gospel. This is why he's told us, even not ever so specifically, to use a puppet show to reach families. To use concerts, street preaching, your very own testimony, the homeless bags, whatever the case may be. Using backpacks to bring people as a captive audience. So that only we survive. But we can also have an aspect of leaving no man behind. If they got left behind, it was their choice because they kept pushing us off. They didn't want the help. But we tried our level best. James 1.12, as we bring this to a close, blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him.
We spent a year studying the book of Job every Wednesday night. And that's a good example of a survivor. Despite all that he went through, he still had the same reverence for God and for his religion. He survived the, te- the peer pressure of his colleagues, the pain of, of sickness, family coming against him. He survived. James 5.11, as you know, we consider bless those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and in seen, have seen what the Lord finally brought about. Passion and mercy. Now God, yes, God allowed Job to go through these things, but there was a design. First of all, you know what? I am grateful and thankful for it because you know what? I don't have to go through that because Job did. God used his example that hopefully we would catch on and not have to ever go through something like that. I don't think anybody really will ever have to again because of this exampleship. But if you don't know who Job was, everything was taken from him. He was a prosperous man. He was known throughout the land. And to make a long story short, everything was stripped. He had boils from the top of his head to the bottom of his toes. Excruciating, hurting, pain. To where to kind of get a relief from him, he would scrape with a a pot shard. Pottery shard. Scraping. And the whole point, the devil was trying to get him to curse God and die. To get him to come against the living God. See, he survived the temptation, the trial. And we're not even going anything close to that. And we're already wanting to give him the towel. Because we're not doing these three things. One time or another, we might be doing one or the other. But you know, we need to do all three. Rely upon Jesus. Obey. And that's a big one for today. The last two, obey and commit, are big ones for today. Because people only want to commit when it's convenient. Well, if it doesn't cut into my beauty sleep, I'll be there. Um, I'm sorry, honey, but you need a little more than beauty sleep. I'm just kidding. If I don't have anything planned on that day, I'll come. Well, maybe you should plan around what God wants to do. Well, pastor's just a man, and he, he's the one that set up that day. Well, maybe he's been inspired by God. Yesterday was a good example. Could not have planned the weather better. It was actually cooler than it's been the rest of the month. Yes, it was still a little hot. That's God's design. I I get no credit. Other than I'm like uh, Woody on a Toy Story. I have God stamped on the bottom of my foot. I'm just his vessel. I'm just created by him. Being used by him. Lastly, Psalms 121, 1 through 8. This kind of brings everything together. I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. You hear that? He's not sleeping while we're sleeping. He's keeping a watchful eye. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and evermore. I will survive. You can survive. You will survive.
because of who God is. You need to put your trust in him. Let people know about him because just, just like you, where you falter and you doubt, there's other people that are the same way and worse off. And they need Jesus. And we're over here having the answer and we're faltering and we're intimidated. Well, they don't want to hear. No. To survive, you need to tell somebody. Because when you talk to that person, it reminds you of who God is. Uh, that's happened to me countless times. I've been doubting or going through something or discouraged. We have outreach going, and then this person, I was like, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> but then, what do I have to tell him or her? God can help you. Okay, I hear you, God. I know you can help me. Just like you can help them. That's how God operates. He'll bring you somebody that is needing a move of God and you're over here upset because you didn't get your grilled cheese for that afternoon. This is what I get. I don't get the meal I want for serving you, God. And this person lost their job, lost their family. And God reminds you, if I can help him, I can surely be there for you. And then that night you get steak. You're like, oh, that's so much better than some grilled cheese. God has so much more in store for you and I. I want to encourage you this morning. You can survive, even though it may be hard. Even though it may be rough. Even though you may not see the end or you're not sure. It just seems like darkness. Let the gospel be a lamp onto your feet step by step until you get to the end. Hallelujah. If I can have every head bowed and every eye closed this morning in the reverence of God's anointing, God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We serve a great and mighty God. A wondrous God. <clears throat> one of the reasons I preach this is because, you know what? I'm seeing Christians drop out. They're not lasting because of these three things I preached on. And we need people, amen, that will do what God has commanded to rise up and be that voice of truth. The other day, me and my wife were talking. And I'm neither against or for protesting, but I kind of had the question, you know, what, what, what does protesting do? What does, you know, everybody's talking about you need to stand up for, so, you know, you need to act or you, you need to do something to, for the, you know, for, for George Floyd or for whoever is in distress or whatever thing is going on, we, we need a t action. What is the proper action? And can I tell you, the proper action is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ because you'll change, you'll reach the world one person at a time. Those pedophiles, they need Jesus, and the only person that can truly change a person is Jesus Christ. So he needs to, he or she needs to hear the gospel. Those drug addicts, those racists, the only one that can truly change a person's heart is Jesus Christ. So the racist needs to hear about Jesus and what he's done. So then if you're a true Christian and you're witnessing, you're outreaching, you're preaching the gospel, then you're doing everything that you're supposed to do as somebody being active. One person at a time. One puppet show at a time. One concert at a time. Just like they think they're a protest. One protest at a time. Preach the gospel. That is the only thing that needs to be done. 
Let them know what Jesus Christ is. Let them know that they have sin in their life. As like in the skit or the puppet show yesterday, the disease of sin, to get rid of it is only by Jesus. That is how we reach the lost. That is how we reach the racist, the pedophile, the homosexual. That is how we reach. And if you're in this place or you're on live stream and you don't know Jesus Christ, You've never accepted, you never committed, you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but to this morning, you want to. The time is now. If you're looking for God to help you in your life, the time is now to commit your life to Jesus Christ, to rely upon Him, to obey His Word. That is how things are going to change. If that's you in this place, you don't know Jesus, you want to give your life to him this morning, won't you lift your hand? Hallelujah. If that's you, we're going to have somebody pray with you. If you're on live stream, we're going to pray here in a little bit. But if you're answering this call, after we pray, I want you to call, message, or text us so we can get a hold of you and help you with the next steps. But I want to address the backslider. You did not survive because you failed in these areas. And granted, all of us can be in, the, in, the, in that point one time or another, but this is why this needs to be preached. This is why we need to be reminded. This is why we always got to seek God and pray and read our word so that we do not fall, so we do not slip, because he will keep us from living. He'll either have a pastor preach a sermon that slaps you and wakes you up, or he'll have a friend come and correct you. Will you receive it? You're backslidden. You need to rededicate your life. If that's you, won't you lift your hand if you're in this place? If you're on live stream, we're going to pray. We're going to have you pray with the new believer maybe you even go to church but because of you not relying upon Jesus because of you not obeying you have this divide this void between you and God and you're sitting in a church but you see that you need to rededicate your life don't let your position stop you from getting it right. Don't worry about what they say because you know what? If you're getting it right, then they should be joyous that somebody of your position is man or woman enough to say, you know what, I'm wrong and I'm going to get it right. They would see that's the best thing for you. So if you're in this place, you need to rededicate your life once you live chan if you're on live stream. Amen. We're going to pray. And those that have never prayed before, join in. Mean it from, with all your heart. Because God loves you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die upon a cross for you and I, for our sins. He was perfect. Never sinned. Yet he took the sins of the world upon him. And for you and I. So let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died. I believe you rose again. I believe you did this for my sins. Lord, I confess my sins to you. Forgive me. Make me new. Make me a new creature. Help me to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Rely upon Jesus. Obey him. Commit.
See, to do all these things, amen, you need to get involved into a local church that's going to help you stay on track. It, it's helped me. And there's, there's times, many times that I've faltered. There's times I've had to rededicate my life because I felt so far from God. I'm a real person just like you to where I make mistakes, where I need to ask forgiveness, where I need to repent. And God is faithful and just to forgive. Just when you make a mistake, when you fall, get back up and say, God, forgive me. Help me never to do it again. I'm seeking you, God, because I know this goes against you. So if you pray, please message us, call us or text us so that we can help you and then get involved in what we're doing. There's many areas and there's many ministries that need to be started. There's many areas that you can get involved and help in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now lastly, saints of God. God dealt with you this morning. Maybe one of these points, you weren't quite where you should be. Or maybe you're worse off, you're hanging on by a thread. You're over the cliff. You're still hanging on, but God wants to help you. God is there for you. He does not set you up for failure. He sets you up for success. But we must see it and we must rely upon it. God has dealt with you. Amen. Take this time to pray as we sing this song. The altar is open.
God, praise and glory. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you. We thank you, we lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. We can never be thankful enough for the sacrifice that Jesus has made. You keep looking back on that. You keep looking towards Christ, setting your eyes upon Christ, focusing upon him. He'll pull you right out of the miry clay. See, verse 2 of our text, Hebrews 12, 2, says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The reason for that is he's the author and perfecter of our faith. That's the, that's the difference. When you go to the one who wrote the story, when you go to the one that designed the building, man, you have all the insight. When we take our eyes off of that, when we do it our way, that's when we make mistakes. Well, I think it'll work better this way. And I, I've, I've seen that. I've worked with people like that. I used to work in constru- uh, carpentry construction. These are the blueprints. Nah, we can do it this way. And what we had to do the next day, we had to tear that down and redo it. And that's why we, we have, a, why do I have to do this again? Because you tried it your way. It wasn't right. It wasn't correct. God doesn't want you to build on a, on a rocky foundation. He wants firm. And be grateful that he's willing to work. He's willing to wait and take the time for you to rebuild, redo the foundation. He's like, you know, I'll, I'll give you the time. Be thankful he doesn't say, ah, oh, you're not worth it. He says, no, you're, you're a precious vessel. You're a precious person. And see, the last part of the verse says, who for the joy set before him, he endured. This is why we need to endure. endure. The joy set before us is, man, a place. Even here on earth, a, a, a peace beyond understanding where God can just help us through the storm to where we're just, we know God's got us. But then there's even that further reward that I talked about that's making heaven. A place for no tears, no more crying. We get a new body. What? Some people are like, man, I wish I had a new body yesterday. Got people coming in here every so often. Man, I need an overhaul. This hurts, that hurts. And God can help. He endured the cross, knowing that he'd be sitting by God once again. And we have that same inheritance. We will survive, but we must rely upon Jesus. We must obey his word and then fully commit, guys. And we'll see God do miraculous things in this church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Be encouraged, amen. Don't forget about tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer at five, service at six. Brother Ken, will you close us in prayer? Yes. Amen. We appreciate everybody. Amen. If you're on live stream, amen. The doors are open. If you're wanting to join us, amen, in person, we do have hand sanitizer. We disinfect after service. Amen. And we also check temperatures on the way in. And so... Um, by all means, come join us. Amen. It's always better in person. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Until next time.